I've only ever seen a dead body once. And it was my favorite school teacher at his funeral. And I remember looking down at him and remembering why he had lived. He told me once that he came to school every day for one thing. And that was those moments when a child's face would come to life, their eyes would gleam, and he knew for certain that they had made a discovery. And I think that today, these moments of discovery are more important than ever before, because the next generation is going to have to solve some of the toughest problems. They're going to have to figure out how to feed nine billion people, when today, we find it difficult and we can't even feed almost one billion. They're going to have to figure out how to get from A to B when the last gas tank runs dry. And very importantly, they're going to have to figure out how to heal our planet now that we have already used up one-third of our natural resource base. And I think that it's going to be the next generation because this generation isn't succeeding. In 2009, I went to the UN Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen. This was the largest gathering of world leaders in the history of civilization, and they had come together to solve climate change. But they failed. They weren't able to find the innovative solutions. They weren't able to empathize enough with each other's cause, and they didn't have enough of the motivation inside themselves to have the willpower to take on this problem. And after Copenhagen, like so many people, I took a step back and I wondered, what would it take for us to solve these kinds of problems? What will it take for the next generation to have the capacity to solve these problems? And I found a powerful example. Some game designers from the Hope Lab in California took on the task of helping cancer survivors. Many teenagers who have suffered from cancer, after they've recovered, they have to take medication in order to recover fully. But often these teenagers don't want to associate it all with their cancer, and they end up failing to take their medication, and often relapse and die. However, these game designers created a game where these teens got to zoom through their own veins, fighting their own illness. And it didn't matter if the kids played the game one time or ten times, they were much, much more likely to take their medication and survive. And this tool of play is actually one of our most powerful evolutionary adaptations for learning how to adapt to a new environment. Some scientists made an experiment. They took two groups of rats. The only difference was one group they didn't allow to play when they were young, and the other group they did allow to play. Then when the rats were grown up, they threw cat collars, scented cat collars, into the midst of both rats. And like good rats, the rats went and hid. But then the group that had played when they were younger slowly came out. They sniffed around, they checked in with each other, and they learned to adapt to the new environment. The group that had not played stayed frozen, paralyzed. They did not have the skills to adapt, and they didn't move, actually, until they starved to death. And I think that we definitely need these abil this ability to adapt in order to change to our new environment, because this is one of the most rapidly changing times in history. And it poses an interesting question. What would happen if we took a class of kids and we used only games. And it turns out, a teacher named Ananth Pai uh, in the States tried this out with his class. He used only games to teach math and English to his third grade class. And from September when he started to January when he finished the experiment, this class advanced from a below average third grade class to a above average fourth grade class. Phenomenal results. And the, the thing that really got me was when this experiment was done and they took the games away from the kids, they took action and they wrote a petition for the right to have games in their education and they brought it forward to their teachers and to the Board of Education. This was an ant pie. <laughs> so, 
Inspired by games, I set out to design a board game where kids would discover through play the real possibility of creating a healthy planet. And I began with an internship with some fantastic people, Rory and Anita, who have a creative game design company in the UK. And they supported me in creating the first version of the prototype. Then I confronted the challenge of how, in one hour, do you give kids a comprehensive understanding of one of the most difficult challenges and most complex challenges we're going to face? And it turns out some of the leading environmental scientists in the world have come up with a breakthrough theory called the theory of planetary boundaries. They've isolated nine natural systems that are essential for the health of the planet. These are things like enough fresh water and a stable climate. And what they've done is they've figured out what the boundaries are, how far, what is a safe, safe operating space for humanity, and what will happen if we exceed these boundaries. And so in the game, we've taken this model so that kids can play out what the future of our world will be like and see if they exceed these boundaries or not. Next, I went to a top branding firm in the UK, and they very generously helped me with the graphic design of the game to make it stimulate, stimulating and engage kids. And Hiromi, the Japanese girl here, who you can see in the picture, she's incredibly sweet and incredibly talented, designed a beautiful new version for the game, which is still in production and is a surprise. So hopefully it'll be reason for you to come back and check out the game later on. Next, I was ready to finally take the game and try it out with kids. And I was a little nervous, to tell you the truth. I didn't know if it was going to be too confusing or they were going to get bored. But what happened is they came to life. The kids debated. I, I heard some of the most eloquent debates for environmental solutions that I've heard in a long time. One girl, uh, she really, really wanted solar energy because they needed to not create climate change and they wanted, uh, she lived on small island states and wanted the sea to rise, where another girl uh, was having problems with cancer and chemical pollution. And they didn't have enough resources at once to solve both problems, so they had to learn to work together. And that's what the game was about. And so now I work for a educational board and card game company. And we're going to take this game and make it available to people around the world and also school systems around the world so that all sorts of youth can have this experience of playing this game and engaging in the motivation and the problem solving and the social, empathetic learning that I think is so essential for developing the skills we need. I really, really hope that our next generation is the kind of generation who goes out, who takes action and associates with these big problems in a pro positive, proactive sense. The reason is that in 20 years' time, when our leaders are making big decisions, it's important that we don't have a public that stands by and lets them ignore the important problems, but ones that calls them to action and make sure that they listen. My hope is that when we all pass away, like my school teacher did, we probably won't have solved the big environmental problems that we face. But I hope that we can rest assured that we have given the next generation enough moments of discovery. When their eyes come to life, they're filled with motivation, they're filled with a will and an ingenuity to, prob to solve problems, that we can rest assured that we will not only survive in the future, but that we'll thrive. Thank you.